guys are ready for a strong year this year, huh? Hey, Happy New Year, everyone. Everyone looks so beautiful. Everyone kicked in the new year pretty good? Everyone's so quiet. Look, it's like, <laughs> oh, it's so good to see you guys today. We're, I'm excited to, uh, to start the new year. I was, I was just kind of preparing a little bit yesterday, and, and uh, man, something just came over me. I just had such an excitement and such a just uh, something, something, something's going to happen this year in 2019. Very, very special, you know. And and we, we, we have to be cautious of, you know, oh, it's a new year, new things are going to happen. But I, I really do believe that God is up to something, and I think we're going to see it happen this year. We're going to see the beginning. We're going to see the beginning stages of of some pretty significant things take place. So I don't know about you, but are you ready to get on the train with Jesus, huh? And just start riding with Him, see what's going on. Um, one thing that wasn't mentioned in the video announcement I want to mention uh, today is uh, tonight at 6.30 p.m. we're having a worship night. Um, it's just going to be a worship night for about an hour or so. <laughs> and uh, we're just going to worship the Lord and, and just be together, okay? So all of you are invited to that. There's no child care. Kids can run around. Um, but we're just going to have a good worship night tonight. So around here at the beginning of the new year, um, we, we have this, this phrasing called New Year's Revelation. Right? How many of you guys have made some resolutions this year? No? Okay. <laughs> nobody, nobody made any resolutions? All right. You see, um, um, New Year's revelation. See, a lot of people at the beginning of the year go, we're going to make some New Year's resolutions. And, uh, and which is great. I think those are really awesome to do. You know, losing weight, okay, uh, being financially responsible, all those things that, those are probably the two biggest things. Being good with relationships, all right, is another one. We, we tend to make these resolutions, which are awesome and wonderful, and I think we need to stick to those resolutions. I think we need to stick to them the best that we can. But there's something about a resolution different than a revelation. You see, a resolution is you decide what you're going to do and you follow through with it, Right? Okay? A revelation comes from within. It's something that God, that God plants a seed in your heart, and then from there it begins to sprout, and then from there it begins to move. See, there's a difference between going after something and actually living from something. Amen? How many of you guys want to live from a place of peace rather than chasing after peace? How many want to live from a place of joy rather than going and chasing joy? You see, I, and I encourage you today to get God's revelation and deep within your heart, deep down in your heart, that way you can live from that place as a foundation of what God desires for our hearts. So, you see, when the Word of God is birth, it's birth from Him depositing seeds of enlightenment and truth for us. And then that which we are living from is real and has foundation. When we live from a place of revelation, right, the foundation is solid, it's real. It's not something we decided we're going to do. It's something that God breathed inside of us. Now, how many of you believe today that God's word is still alive? We all know that the Word of God is still alive, but I'm asking if you understand and know that God still breathes His word of life into our hearts. He desires to speak to you in a way where you'll understand with clarity and understanding so you can live in confidence in him. Let me tell you, before I get into my notes, this year has to become a year for some of us in this place where we no longer tiptoe and waver back and forth, but we firm down and we say we are going to, we're going to, we're going to have our roots down deep inside of God's presence, inside of who he is. That way we can live from a place of God's presence. I'm so sick and tired. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of going like this, back and forth. My relationship with God is great one week, hallelujah. Then the next week, it's not good. Can we get over that for a second and start living? as Jesus Christ is birthed inside of our hearts. Every year we come together around the word of God for our church and for what we're doing. In 2016, if you were here that long ago, the word was live the promise. Does anybody remember that? Yeah. Live the promise. 2017 was come alive. And remember come alive? 2018 was thrive, thrive. And so let me just take, talk real briefly about 2018. I believe that we have together as a church taken steps that have put us in motion in a thriving way in our church, in our relationships, in our relationship with God, and experiencing him and encountering the presence of God. How many would agree with that? I believe that God has taken our church from the beginning of January of 2018 to the end of 2018 in a direction where we're, 
We're getting set up, guys. I just want you to know that. <laughs> We're getting set up to really see the greatness and the goodness of God in a very powerful way. Um, April 2018, um, my wife and I, we took a trip to a conference and the Lord just began to speak to my heart the direction for 2019, back in April 2018. Can you believe that? And, um, <clears throat> and he just began to share with me where he wanted to take us. And this is so, this is so great because uh, um, Nate didn't even know that I was going to preach on this today. Um, and he shared our theme verse for the year. Um, he didn't even know what, what, what it was. <laughs> and, uh, but but, there's, but the, the word of the Lord for our church this year in our New Year's revelation that we're going to live from is the word called strong, okay, strong. You know, and that's going to that's gonna go in a, a few different ways for some people. But, but I believe that the word strong, we're going we're gonna to focus on three, in, um, three kind of channels, if you will, in the word strong. And that's strong people, strong family, and strong church. Okay, strong people, strong family, strong church. All right, when you think of the word strong, what do you think of? You think of, well, first of all, you think of, instantly I, I think of six-pack abs, right? <laughs> I was going to say, which, I, you know, I don't know if that's going to happen or not with me this year, but hallelujah, maybe. But I think of somebody who's, re I think of somebody who's reliable. I think of somebody who's got a great foundation. I think, of, I think of the word strong in the sense of not being blown over by the wind, not being, taken, not being taken captive by any thoughts, not being taken captive by the distractions in life, but somebody who is firmly founded and rooted in God. And so we're going to talk through those things for the next several weeks, strong, strong people, strong family, and strong church. But today I want to talk to you about this New Year's revelation called Strong what it is to live in a strong year in 2019. Can we just agree here this morning that we are going to have a year of breakthrough and a year of, of stability and a year of vitality and a year of life and a year of strength? Come on, who wants that for your life today? Like we're, we're no more, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, Jesus, help me out, Father. So the Lord began to birth this word strong to bring about strength into our church, to bring a culture of healthy, vibrant people who have a strong relationship with God and with others, to have the roots of his power, glory, anointing, love, and creative expression, and his word, and, uh, and relationships being knitted together in a very strong way. I mean, you do realize that you can't do it alone, right? Right? If you're a loner here this morning, I want you to know that you've come to the right place because we love you. And we want you to experience the fullness of God today. There's absolutely no judgment here when you walk in through these doors because we just sense and we believe that you are a child of God like we sang about this morning. Amen. So the picture I got and continue to get as I continue to pray, as you can see over here, don't show that picture quite yet. Uh, this last week, we had a week of prayer, and, and uh, what happened? Did he show it? <laughs> this last week, we had a week of prayer, and um, if you didn't participate, um, you really missed out. We had some really great times of prayer, so I just want to say thank you to those who came and prayed um, with us this last week, at least one of the nights. It was powerful. But we, every year, we have this thing called a, a vision board, and this year's strong vision board, and the picture that we keep seeing, and these are people just writing things down what they see our church in 2019. So I encourage you, come on up here, take a peek at it, take a picture of it, pray these things in, all right? But the picture that keeps coming and just keeps going through my mind is, is this big, colorful, awesome looking tree. Now you can show the picture. All right, so he said this, 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 this tree, gosh, if somebody can paint this, that'd be awesome. But this tree of just, just, all kinds of flourishing, all kinds of things taking place, but the roots are all connected and the roots are extremely deep within the ground. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse eight, Nate Becker read it this morning, says this, they will be like a tree planted by the water. This is our theme verse this year that we will just live by, okay? We will walk in, we will live by. Jeremiah 17, 8, they will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. 
It has no worries in a year of drought and never, never, never fails to bear fruit. God's expectation for our lives when we're rooted in him is to continually bear fruit, to bear fruit from our lives, fruits of repentance, fruits of joy, the fruit of the spirit, whatever kind of fruit you want to be this year, okay, God's desire is for us to always be in a constant place where we live fruity. So I got to thinking about roots and what their mission is here on a tree or whatever roots you're thinking of. I mean, we all know that weeds have roots too, right? And sometimes I got this one, when I, especially when I lived in Illinois, I had this weed that looked like a tree. You guys with me, right? And, and I tried to pull that thing out of the ground. I was like, that ain't going to happen. And then I tried to cut it, and then I like, tried to cut me back. And I was like, hey, stop it, you know. And, and all these things. I was like, okay, so weeds have roots too. So we have to understand that you, you got to be planted in the right kind of soil, right, in order to flourish, in order to grow correctly, in order to grow right. Because all the things that happen with weeds is they kill the vegetation around them, and they get pulled. They get yanked out. You want to get yanked out of God's presence this year? I don't think so. God wants to have you to be a fruit carrier this year. So roots. What are the four major functions? What are the major functions of roots? There's four of them. There's the absorption of water. There's the support of the tree. The third one is to store food and nutrients. And the last one is vegetative reproduction. These are the functions of a root why they're here, why they're on a tree, why, why they're there. It's to absorb water, it's to support the tree, it's to store food, and to, be a reprodu- and to reproduce all right, what it is that they're growing. So let's talk about this. I believe full heartedly that God desires for you this year is a year to grow. But not just to grow, but to grow deep. So let me tell you prophetically a little bit. We, as a church, are going to experience some things this year that will blow us away. Who's ready? I'm talking like blow us away. I'm talking like we have to believe and understand that the Bible is not just written for us for good stories for us to teach. The Bible is written for us as an example and a template for us to live. So when I look at the book of Acts, what I see in the book of Acts is signs, wonders, and miracles. And here's the cool thing. Jesus was up and gone at this time, and he says, hey, you, people, people who are messed up, these are the ones that I'm going to use to provide and to be a conduit through to see these things happen. And let me tell you, my friends, you and I have that same power as in the book of Acts as we do today and never stop because there is no amen at the book of Acts. And that simply means that we get to walk according to what God has set in his word for us to walk in. We're going to see some things this year that is going to blow us away. I believe with all of my heart that God is preparing our church to be a cancer-free zone. Oh, Pastor Jake, you're setting us up to let us down. I want to see God move in ways that only we can go. God, that must have been you. You know what I'm saying? I believe he's setting us up, guys. Setting us up for something very, very good, but we have to understand that we cannot no longer live the surface level Christianity, that we have to allow our roots go deep down into the, to the ground of God's foundation so that when, when these things begin to happen, we don't get swayed to the left or to the right. We keep our eyes focused on Jesus and we keep moving forward in him. Jeremiah 17, 8, a tree planted by the water. See, that water is his presence. We have to be a church and a people that will center around his presence. I believe that God wants to do things for us. Amen? How many believe that? He wants to do things for us. He also wants to do things through you. And the way that that happens is that we center around the presence 
of God. I, 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 the, the picture I get in my mind is, is, is the Israelites around the fire at night and the smoke by day, and they would just worship around that. It's the, pre- the perfect picture of the presence of God, centering around, hosting his presence, hosting his presence. You see, we have to understand to be a body that will say yes to host his presence, to be and to grow comfortable with his moving and with his spirit. We have to grow comfortable when he does things in our midst that we go, man, Jesus, that was really awesome. That was really great. And not always try to have some kind of reasoning behind it. Listen, I understand reasoning. I understand explanation. I understand looking to the scripture and we need to do that. And you're, you're hearing it right from me that that is important to do, right? But I want to take and, and get on the side where we be, start believing for the miraculous things to start happening in our midst. Where we start believing for the, un, <laughs> for, the, for the supernatural things of God to take place within our hearts, take place within our midst. We're going to see it, folks. You ready? I hope so. See, the water is his presence. It's his, it's his spirit that we have to move through and center around. So how do we do this? Number one, we do this. We cultivate this atmosphere of his presence and, and the revolving around his presence. He's going to do things for us. But I'd rather revolve around him rather than him revolving around my needs all the time. Because in him, there's life. In him, your needs will be met. Amen? In him, these things will take place. So how do we cultivate this atmosphere? We worship. We have to continue to focus on worshiping him. Not worshiping worship. Hear what I just said. We have to focus on worshiping him, not worshiping worship. There's a difference. Sometimes we get caught up on worshiping worship instead of worshiping Jesus, the one we're worshiping. This year, let's be a church and let's, not just a church, but let's be a people every day that we walk out, that we worship him. That we worship him. Yeah, I can get into the how-tos and the what the expectations are and all those things. But the reality is, can we just worship him for who he is? Let's just worship him for who he is. Another way we cultivate this atmosphere is being obedient to his voice and direction. When he speaks, we must obey. It's as simply as that. Right? It's as simple, but yet the most difficult. Because when he speaks, it will require you sometimes to step outside of your comfort zone and take a risk when you're not usually comfortable. But when you take a risk and you have a little bit of faith and do the things you're not comfortable with, that's when miracles start to take place. Why? Because God already gifted us with some of the things that we naturally can do. It's the things that we are not supposed to do and the things that we're not gifted to do is when God steps up. Because when he is weak, when I am weak, he is strong. Amen? And that's when miracles start to happen. That's when things start to take place is when we step out of what we're normally used to doing. That way, God can show up on the scene and go, yeah, that was Jesus who did that. That was God who did that. We have worship, being obedient to his voice, and then prayer. Prayer and spending time with God is an anchor in hosting his presence. I encourage you to check out our podcast online. You can listen to our prayer message that I preached last week. It was really good from what I hear. For myself, I looked in the mirror and says, man, Jake, that was really good sermon. <laughs> All right, so very briefly here, I want to talk about the four functions of a root, okay? Number one is to absorb water, right? Your roots are created to absorb his presence. The deeper you go in his presence and his voice, the stronger you will become. Come on. The stronger you will become. I've got this tree outside of my yard right now. You can look at it. Of course, it's an ash tree, and we all know what happens to those things, right? But, but I was mowing the lawn this last summer, and, and I mowed up, and boom, I ran over a root. It's the worst thing ever, right? When you run over a root, or how do you say it, rut? Root? I don't know what you're going to say, right? When you run over this thing, and then it, like, it just messed up my blade on the inside, and then every, now I turn on my lawnmower, it goes tick, 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 tick. I was like, oh, no, Jesus right? But I've got these roots that are coming out of the ground from this tree. And, 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 I, and I, when I was preparing this message, I thought about that. I thought, man, when you look up into my tree, sometimes you'll see a couple of leaves sprouting here and there. So there is a little bit of life in there. But naturally, those roots, because they're not deep, the tree is dead now, right? The tree is dead now. 
And, and anytime wind comes, the dead branches just fall on the, fall on the ground. And then I got to send my kids out to go pick up the sticks because I'm not doing it. And now they're old enough now where they're going, I'm not doing it either, dad. I'm like, oh, great. Come on, I give you $5. <laughs> yeah, like that works anymore, right? And, and so all this stuff is taking place and I gotta go up there and pick it up. And so I just got to the point where I'm like, forget it, scratch it. I'm just running them over my lawnmower, right? It's already dinking at me and might as well dink even louder, okay? So all these things, so, so I think about that, I think the, the wind is coming, the storms come, whatever, and the branches just fall down because the roots are not deep within the ground and that's how it is with our own walk with God. We are created for our roots to go down deep into his presence and the deeper those roots go, the stronger and more life-giving and the more vital your life is with Jesus. I want my roots this year of my life to go down deep into God's presence. There's a verse in the Bible that says, taste and see that the Lord is good. See guys, once you've tasted and you've seen, you don't want nothing else but what God has. You want nothing else but what God has. Our shallow life this year, shallow Christianity. And what do, what do I mean by that? Where everything's very surface, when the only thing that you get from Jesus is on Sunday, which thank God we get to meet here on Sunday, right? I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not dogging that. I think it's great. I think it's wonderful. We all need to come together corporately. But let me tell you, Jesus needs to be as real today as he is tomorrow and Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday of your life. You have to have a relationship with Jesus. You've got to be centered around the presence of God, digging deep into his word, digging deep into relationship, digging deep into his presence, letting your roots go down deep. Because, guys, listen, when the storms come and when they happen and the fire breathes on us, like the word of God says, we will not be shaken. We will not move because our roots are founded in him. Number two, it supports the tree. See, when the roots of our lives grow deep in him, we become strong in our faith. We begin to recognize God, who he is, and equally important, we begin to recognize when it's not God in our lives. It does not fear when he comes, its leaves are always green. I believe that you can flourish in the time of tribulation, come on. I believe you can flourish in the time of tribulation. How many of you thought, thank God 2018 is done, hallelujah, <laughs> right? New year, Whew. dodge the bullet on that one, right? I believe that in the times of tribulation in your life, whether that be sickness in your home, whether that be estranged loved ones, whether that be people who do not know who Christ is in your workplace, and maybe you go to a very, very dark workplace. Whatever the case may be, I believe in the times of inconsistency and tribulation that we, because our roots are firm down deep, that we are going to be strong and not waver back or forth. We're not gonna do it this year. It's not gonna happen. Who, who would say here this with, with me today, I'm gonna make a commitment not to go to the left or the right, no matter what happens. I will keep on pressing forward in Christ. I will keep on moving. Listen, I'm going to disappoint you. You're going to disappoint me. We're going to have awesome relationships. Your friends are going to disappoint you. Your family's not going to be there all the time when you need them. But make no mistake about it. When your roots are down deep, it provides strength for you never to fall away from the Lord. I declare that this year will be a year that you will dig down deep and you will never fall away from what God has spoken to you. Never fall away from it. The third thing is this. It provides food and nutrients. See, when our roots are deep, we develop a sensitivity to his spirit. And according to the word in Matthew, it says this. And, and it says this, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then it says what? Give us this day our daily bread. So what is this daily bread? What is this daily bread? What is the food of the kingdom? I'll tell you what it is. <clears throat> it's the advancement of his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. 
How do I know that? Because the book of John spells it so well when Jesus is telling the people. He says, my food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. That's my food. It's to do the will of God, the one who sent me. And not just to do it, but to finish his work. You see, when our roots are deep, our second nature will be to hear his voice and do the work. To partner with what heaven is doing in your atmosphere, no matter where your atmosphere is. See, you have to understand, you're not just a Christian to simply try to do the right things. Do you hear what I'm saying to you today? I, 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 believe, I, I believe this, and I, and I think it's great. But I think sometimes Christianity has been reduced to the, to the do rights and the do not do goods. Right? Those, we, we, we've, 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 been, we've been reduced to, well, if I just don't do this, then I'm good. Do, do you hear what I'm saying? If I just don't, if I don't, if I don't cuss and if I don't smoke and if I don't date girls who do, okay, then I'm okay. All right? Or whatever the case is, we've reduced it to simply behavioral model rather than rolling into what Jesus Christ really did for us on the cross. See, when he died for us on the cross and he rose again on the third day, he provided for us a, a, an avenue. As a matter of fact, the Bible says this, that he tore the temple right in half. And what was on the other side of the temple? The presence of God. He provided for us a way to have full access to the kingdom of God. So when we walk here on earth, our main mission is not just to do the right things, but to do the things with power behind them. To live in power to them. God, if you can carry his cross, then God trusts you enough to carry his power. I'm just carrying my cross, brother. Just carrying my cross. That's awesome. Let's carry the power of God too with that. Let's carry the power of God with that as well. For us just to live in the, I'm just gonna do this so that way I can just punch my card and get into heaven right away, right? Just so we can do that. God has a different plan for us. And here's the neat thing about God. Your roots, some of our roots kind of maybe here, some of our roots may be really deep. But that doesn't matter where your roots fall. The matter is, is how deep they're going. That's what God's concerned about. Will you allow this year to be a year where your roots continue to grow and continue to mature, continue to go deep into the presence of God so that way the nutrients that are there, the food of the Father, the will of God will naturally come from your hearts and naturally come from your lives. I'd even vouch to say this, and I just felt like the Holy Spirit just spoke this to me, that there's been people here that in 2018, you said to yourself, man, I... I really want to do this. I really want to do this. And we've always kind of like got to that point and we went, oh, and we kind of regress a little bit. And then we can work ourselves back up and we're going to do this. And uh, Let this be the year of the tipping point for you. Where this year, instead of getting to that point where you're going to minister to that person, right, out, out and about where you're going to pray for that person, you know, at the Walmarts or, or even better yet, when you hear the voice of God and you act on it, whatever that's, whatever that's going to, how everything's going to play out in your life, right, instead of just kind of waiting and going, oh, no, that's not really, that's just me talking, that's not, no, listen, that's God talking to you, okay, because you and yourself are not good. Do you hear what I'm saying? There's nothing good about you, but because of Christ inside of you is the reason why you're good. And when he speaks to you to do good things, it's him speaking to you to do those things, do you hear what I'm saying? So when you get to that point and you feel like you should do something, let it be the tipping point. Tip over with it. Because I guarantee it, you're going to start seeing the, the, the will of God start playing out in your life. And let me tell you, when you do that, it's like a buffet for Jesus. All right? He continually feeds you and feeds your soul and fills your heart. I've heard people say this pretty much in my full 20 years of ministry. 21 years of full-time ministry. Oh, the pastor just doesn't feed me anymore. You want to know why you're not feeling fed a lot of the times? It's because you're not doing the will of the Father. It's because we're not doing the will of God. We 
We have to be about his business, amen? Last thing is this. Let me have the worship team come back up as well. The last thing is the vegetative reproduction. So reproducing. When we go deep into his presence, when we allow our roots to go deep into his word, to go deep into his word, to go deep into his spoken word, his rhema word over us, when we allow God to begin to move in our hearts and take us from one place to another, we're going to make disciples. We're going to reproduce. See, making disciples, making disciples is more than just the Bible study. I, I hope you do understand that. Those are important. Okay, I'm not saying they're not. They're they're, they're needing. We've got all kinds of great ones here. And matter of fact, next week we're gonna, I'm going to introduce to you some, some, uh, some, a new structure in our, in our small groups that we're doing um, here in our church for us to have, a, um, have an outlet for relationships and discipleships and those kinds of things. But, but discipleship goes more than, than, a, than a Bible study. Discipleship goes in with relationship. It, uh, what dis- a true discipleship really is, is allowing someone else to read your life like a book. You see, you hear the word mentor, right? If we can use it and say it a different way, the word mentor is simply men tour my life. People tour my life. And discipleship, we have to allow other people to see Christ in us in action. How we deal with situations in our life. When people make us frustrated, when we're encountering certain things in our personal lives, how do we rely on God and allowing people to tour that part of our lives? Now, I know it's really difficult a lot of the times because we, want, we don't want to be transparent, right? We don't, wanna, we don't want people in, into that, that, that compartment into our lives because we're afraid of hurt, we're afraid of those things. And I understand that, trust me, and so does God. God understands that as well. But if we're truly going to build disciples and make disciples like the, like the Lord commissioned us to do, then we have to be okay with allowing people to tour our lives. When things go wrong and things go crazy, right, how do we handle that? How do we handle that? See, in his presence, and when we go deep into his presence, in his presence... The response of that will be to make disciples. See, if we get people who say, I'm really deep in God's presence, I can feel them all over me, but they're not being reproductive in their walk with God, I question the depth of their relationship with Jesus. You can get the heebie-jeebies chicken skins all day long, guys, with the presence of God. And trust me, I'm all for that. But if we're not reproducing, we need to ask ourselves, why are we believers in Christ? Why am I a believer? God desires for us to go down deep so that way we can reproduce him and others. It's the call of God in our lives. So we've got centering around God's presence, absorbing his presence, absorbing the water that we're planted by the streams, letting our roots go down deep in his presence. And when we make that the main thing, then we'll have support. We'll not be shaken. We'll not go to the left or to the right. When the political climate in our, in our culture gets really heightened and there's things that we just absolutely don't like, we're going to go, okay, God, you got that taken care of. I'm not going to worry about it. We'll be strong, strong roots when we go deep. We'll have food, nutrients to store up the food and the nutrients. We'll have in our heart what he desires most from us. That's the, that's the will of God for your life. It's to discover what it is that he has in his heart for us and then to walk in that. And then we'll reproduce when our roots are deep. And so I want to encourage you today. 
Jeremiah 17, 8 says this, it has no worries in a year of drought and it never fails to bear fruit. Wouldn't it be great this year, 2019, to live a worry-free life? How many of you say, oh, Pastor Jake, you're crazy. That's so unrealistic. Not according to the word of God, it's not. Am I saying things aren't gonna happen? Of course they are. Right? That's silly talk to think that things aren't gonna go your way all the time. Yes, you'll wake up and your batter will be dead. Yes, your son and your daughter will scream and yell at you and slam the door and say, I don't like you anymore, I don't love you anymore. Those things will continue to happen. But I believe that God wants to set up our hearts that when those, when those droughts seem to be coming and when that fire begins to come and when that heat comes and the winds come and the tribulations come and the things come our way, that we can stand tall, we can stand strong in 2019. And we can say we will not be shaken. Why? Because God, you're the king of my heart. Because you're the king of my heart. Everything that I am is about you. Amen? So let this be the year you never see a season of drought. Let this be a year where our, ro where our roots go deep. But the reality is you can never go deep if you don't know him first. So before we sing this last song and we close out service here in the next few moments, I wanna ask this question. Is there anybody here this, this morning that says, you know what, Pastor Jake, and we're gonna go eyes wide open, man. Anybody here that says, you know what, Pastor Jake, I, I need prayer, I'm not really living for Jesus and I want to. I've never really submitted my life to him or maybe I did at one time, but new year, new life, I'm ready to recommit and go all in. If that's you, can you just raise your hand real quick and put it right back down? Is there anybody here that says, that's me, Pastor Jake, pray for me? That's me, good. And there's one, anybody else? There's two, thank you. Anyone else? Awesome. That's so great, guys. Come on, somebody, that's powerful. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, let's all stand today. And if you raise your hand, I want Nate Becker to come stand over here on the corner. If you raise your hand today, I want to invite you to come forward and find Nate and have him pray with you today. We've got a little something that we want to give to you. It's right behind that platform. Something we want to give to you to kind of help kickstart this. But can we just worship him and just dedicate this first year this first day of this, first Sunday of this year, and say, you're the king of my heart, Jesus. Everything that I am is yours. Come on, let's do it. Come on. Come on, let's just worship him. And listen, I invite you to come forward, find a place, all right? Our ministry team will be up here as well in just a few moments to pray for you. Come on, let's just worship him. Come on, in Jesus.